The stock market no longer thinks it needs the economy if it has the Fed. The stock market does not think it needs the economy if the Fed can count on the collateral of income tax cash flows from individual U.S. citizens and federal assets to backstop the risk in Wall Street speculation, day trading and high-frequency trading, as well as legal offshore tax havens to arbitrage the tax man. The Fed had forced leverage. During the last three decades, leverage was the policy of central banking and got massive support from policy makers in Washington. Now their conundrum is, how do you deleverage? Do they help savers to create stable flow of cash into the banking system or the create debt to inflate the system? So far, the old tools to deleverage have not worked and are not accepted. Thus, they cannot deleverage through normal tools. Risk pricing is at high depression levels, with metrics at levels very few times seen before, so what is the solution? History has examples of deleveraging, and that this time is different, is true. This time the leverage is bigger and it is at a time of social extreme decoupling in the middle of a health and climate crisis. So yes, this time is different, every time that savers are trying to get some money saved it gets destroyed and the next option offered by, experts, is piling on risk. For sure, the past and the future might not be the same but the future evolves from the actions of the past, there is reason why they rhyme. When the similarities in fiscal and economic situations appear, the historic path is a massive destruction of the leveraged positioning via bankruptcies and social disruption, no more no less. History teaches many lessons and when you have a set of premises that are parallel, it is not wise to ignore the past. As long as the Federal Reserve keeps pumping monetary stimulus into the financial system, the financial markets can continue to ignore the awful state of the economy. It feels like we are living in an altered state of consciousness. The Fed has created a fake economy in which a company's value is driven by momentum trading versus the real economy in which a business is valued based on its fundamentals. When you take investment risk off the table, what do you expect? For me, I expect to see more fake companies like Wirecard emerging over the next few years. The stock market valuation reminds me of the effects of Botox injections. What starts out as an improvement gradually become a gross distortion and leads to incredible regret. Welcome to the Nomad Economist. The financial system is not the economy even though many people do not recognize the distinction. This means the gigantic efforts by the world's central banks and governments to essentially bail out both will prove somewhat ineffective. The pandemic has become the catalyst for a major reset of both the financial sector and the main street economy, this video will attempt to give some clarity as to what we might find still standing on the other side of this crisis. Note the use of the word crisis, anyone who does not view the pandemic now as a watershed event is oblivious to the world around them. Originally the title to this video was, Mind the Lag Time Gap, The Worst is Yet to Come. You may call me Captain Obvious if you hone in on the later part of this title but the first portion is the most important part. We should make a real effort to remember to mind the gap between events appearing on the radar and when they actually impact day-to-day -day life. There is such a thing as lag time, everything is not immediate in our fast-moving world, some events take time to play out. The pandemic crisis is greatly complicated because we have no real idea of how long it will persist. Hints have been made, possibly to ready the population, that this could or will likely continue for months. The scale, scope, and speed at which world markets have sold off and lost value as investors try to get in front of this thing has been dramatic. Global stock and bond markets have seen an estimated $25 trillion of paper wealth erased in the last month. This has erased all the gains from the December 2018 crash lows with more of the impact focused on stocks than bonds. In its wake, the sell-off has stripped many people of their savings and jeopardized the future existence of many businesses and financial institutions. On the flip side of the carnage is the ramping up of promises that a flood of money and aid is forthcoming. All options are on the table to get money into the hands that need it, some of it in the way of adding liquidity, some of it as a gift to anyone with their hand out. The specifics are spotty at best but one thing we can be sure of is that those lobbying hardest will get the most. The questions that remain to be answered are, how well this will work and will this infusion of cash be enough? As the world faces the biggest financial bailout in history it is now being reported in the news the US, in conjunction with the Federal Reserve, will now lend up to $4 trillion to businesses affected by the pandemic. Working with the Federal Reserve, 
We'll have up to $4 trillion of liquidity that we can use to support the economy, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin told Fox News on Sunday. What Mnuchin, a former Goldman Sachs executive, did not talk about is how dangerous these volatile markets are for the average investor. Unfortunately, as with most programs unleashed by the financial political complex, we can expect much of the money to rapidly flow to enriching those atop the wealth pyramid. Another certainty is that when all is said and done those in charge will rapidly claim things would have been far worse if they had not taken such draconian actions. People have shown they have a very short memory when it comes to the truth. Many Americans also have a difficult time understanding a large reason for the rapid growth of inequality is because the wealthy one-tenth of one percent of the population controls and shapes the nation's policy to their advantage. So far the pandemic is a new entry onto the scene. The reality of how it will affect the economy has yet to be realized and will trickle down to society. What I deem the financial political complex will protect its own with a massive bailout under the guise of the greater good. This extension of crony capitalism will throw just enough to the masses to silence their outrage. Large businesses will be the winners while the big losers again will be the middle class, small businesses, and social mobility. A few of the things that may change society are detailed below. Many people think the impact on labor force participation will remain mild with workers viewing all this as transitory. As the impact of the pandemic take root and if activity fails to rapidly normalize, it is possible more workers may reevaluate their life and decide to exit the labor force altogether. The same will happen with many small business owners that come to the conclusion this is a sign to close their doors and retire. The pandemic has fed fear and insecurity, these are not feelings that increase investors' desire or take on new risks. While you hear about the massive aid package the financial political complex is concocting to prop up this mess we should not forget they are responsible for much of the damage flowing from this crisis. For years they ignored the growing weakness on Main Street and focused on rising GDP numbers that were driven by government deficit spending. Addressing this now is like trying to turn a battleship around in a lake the size of a bathtub, nearly impossible. If it can be done it will take a long time. No matter how much money they throw at this the economy will not turn around on a dime or spring back. Regardless of how the financial sector fares the economy is destined to feel a great deal of pain. The markets are not the economy. The two have been intertwined in the American psyche since the 1929 stock crash and the onset of the Great Depression. But stocks are not a reliable gauge of overall economic health. We are in the second inning of a long game. It is only as this lingers that we begin to feel the full power of the lag time effect. Anyone that thinks next month will be a return to business as usual and fails to mind the gap between expectations and reality is primed for disappointment. Too big to fail has become deeply embedded in our crony capitalist society and a key part of the financial political complex now running the show. If you are not part of this group I suggest you prepare to be thrown under the bus for the greater good. Just wonder when, or even if, I will ever see any, normal, again in my lifetime. It would take someone of immense courage, i.e. a Paul Volcker mentality, to reverse this socialistic disaster. Or, it may just reach a point where the insanity and risk, including US solvency, has simply become too much for investors to handle, and the buyers dry up, other nations pull their funds, and the entire system goes through a massive corrective cleanse. Either way, the fundamentally investable market has been completely destroyed at this point. It is nothing but algos, day traders, 401k drips, naivete and FOMO keeping this thing propped up. Even so-called value stocks IEBA, are unjustifiably well above their 2007 peak. The only justification for any stocks at this point being there is no alternative, but that reminds me of the people rushing to buy the extremely overpriced house in 2007 saying there is nothing cheap, so they better get in before housing becomes even more expensive, we know how that worked out. The same easy money and excessive debt that caused the 2008 mortgage crisis has now dangerously infected the entire world markets, and the potential collapse at this point could make 2008 look like an appetizer. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. 
Stay safe and healthy friends.